All right, so we're here live with Du the Xiong, right? Yeah. From Minnesota, right? Um, Minnesota, baby. Minnesota. Where are you from? Like, what, what town? Saint Paul. Grew up in Saint Paul. I lived in the Minneapolis sub uh, ghetto. I lived in the Saint Paul ghetto. We were named. There's the Minneapolis Saint Paul Twin Cities. We're the Twin Ghetto Cities. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. So, yeah. so, so today's show is show twenty five. The business of virtual concerts, right? So he's only got twenty minutes. So if you guys have any questions, comment below or just give it a shout out, and we'll you know we'll, we'll give you guys a shout out as well. Like let us know where you guys are from. Give us a few likes so we can get this known. Um, he, he's got a concert tomorrow, right? Huge concert tomorrow. Huge. So, so let's start out by I mean, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, I know you're a comedian and stuff like that, but let's yeah. just give us a brief like, like intro about yourself and then today we're just going to talk about the concert but all right i'll do this just a little bit of a little ad here we just got a brand new shirts in right nice. um so he among uh yeah so a little bit some of you guys may may not know me um but i'm based in minnesota uh i've been doing comedy storytelling as a professional motivation motivational speaker for oh man 20 some years now um started right out of college so and uh when i got out of college they're like two to uh I was a confused little 20 year old 22 year old college graduate right like now what i do right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't want to go to work nine to five so <laughs> i just started um like like the name of this show i started my hustle right all right <laughs> like, i'm like comedian can you imagine my dad's like make i don't like i don't like the smell of hospitals right i don't like to be around <laughs> sick people you know yeah it has um, that that bad I want to tell jokes. My dad's like, what do you want to tell jokes? So I was that I used to joke. I I was that door-to-door -door comment, man. I would knock on people's like, yo, man, I got some jokes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so on a serious note, uh serious note, when I graduated, I wanted to um I knew I wanted to do something in the in the area of community engagement, you know, or community organizing, um, inspiring young people, uh, particularly young people who grew up in the inner, inner city, like your low idea. You know where they couldn't be monk, it couldn't be mita. They were carpentry cultures. A lot of our friends like ended up in gangs. You know, yeah. so I want to make sure my narrative was out there, out front, and say, hey, this is my story, and I'm gonna tell. I tell the best. I don't want no white person to write my story, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to tell my narrative. So yeah, so I kind of went on this sort of self discovery tour, you know, um, and t just kind of took a risk and said, hey, if I if I get a gig, you know. Um, they were paying me, you know, 50 bucks, you know, 100 bucks to go tell my stories. I'm like, man, that's better than nothing, right? <laughs> so after a while, I realized if I do three or four gigs a week, that's like the full, that's like a full time paycheck. Oh, okay. Um, started doing that. And, uh, you know, here I am 20, 23 years later, um, 1600 programs, 45 states. Wow. Um, yeah. My audience is, is, you know, from five people to like 5,000 people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do corporate, I do church groups, nonprofit organizations, I do, um, you know, youth groups. So high a lot, lot of my clients are high school, college, and, uh, um, you know, like elementary school. So I started to get that in now. I don't yeah. my dragon in the public. And, yeah, yeah, so uh, it just spread like, uh, um, you know, by word of mouth. I I've never really gone out there and advertised myself. I just, when I'm on stage, I just pour it all in and I'm sweating. There are people, and I think people, I, 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 you know, my experience tries that people saw like the authentic authenticity. Yeah. So they're like, man, let's get this guy to our school. Let's get this guy here. So that's kind yeah. of been my journey. The last What's, the 20 story, years. What's the story like when you go in? Do you, is it about like your story or what is it like stories that you heard or? Yeah, these are stories. Um, my, my experience going among American, uh, my, my experience um, with, uh, you know, having to navigate two cultures. I yeah. do a lot of reenacting with mom and dad and the stories they tell. So, you know, we come from a big, we come from a storytelling culture, right? They can love the than being of yeah. So I was always a good story listener. Like I would hear a story and I can remember that story 20 years later, right? Yeah. And, but these stories, because they had an emotional impact on me. And so I would um, you know, some people have like a photographic memory. I kind of yeah. have like maybe yeah. this really, I don't know, this this audio memory of, of ear, you know. And so I went, man, and I get moved. So I, yeah, would you get low? Um, I, I, uh, I try to stay in the moment and, and absorb all of their stories. And so yeah. over the years, I, man, our stories are so rich. If we're able to 
um, transcribe it and, and convert it into a teaching tool. Yeah. Wow. You know, that's, that's yeah. education itself. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And then, and then you're also like a, and like an activist or something like that, right? Is that what you got? Is that what they pick? They call it or. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I can wear little hats. It's weird. Like, y'all can be I, funny one day and the next day be on the streets. Yeah. Like, you know, hell no, we won't go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Which, got, you know, you do a good job. You do a good job. Right? Tell us a little bit about that and what, what have you done with that? You know, like what you've done on some big cases and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. I got to blow my nose for a second. <sighs> No worries. So, the man of the hour, dude. I man, I met him like back in like whew, when I was like just in college, you know. And what well, he he put on a, he put on a, a like, comedy show, and I was just like, "Holy cow, who is this guy?" You know. So you know, I went ahead and bought your videos and stuff like that. Your oh yeah, you know, thank you. And, man, yeah. I still I still have it till this day, man. It's 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 crazy, you know. But I mean, just seeing you out there, like, dude, this guy's full of energy, you know. Back then. You know, so yeah, so like uh, you had a like uh, as far as being an actor, you had a few cases going on, like were really yeah. big. So yeah, tell us about um, that. You know? you know, so um, I mean, I've always had, I've always been like socially conscious of social justice issues, right? Being more because I mean, if you growing up in the generation that we did, you 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 have to be because you see the racism. Um, back then, it was blatant, right? And then as you get older, you kind of see how racism and discrimination um, evolves. It's more underground now, right? You see the microaggressions and then you yeah. start to realize, man. And then our parents went through, we, and it, as, as Hmong Americans, Asian Americans, our generation, we go through, we, we're seeing this, but the difference between our parents' generation, and our generation is that they couldn't fight back. They did not have the language. Right. So back then it was like, one thought could see either turn the other cheek or one thought could right? And you know? I like but that. Ideas, yeah. You and I, we're at the generation where, wait a minute, we, we're fighting. We have the, 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 um, the skills and the utility to fight back with that. We're not with the fist yeah. or the gun, but we fight back with words and with the, within the law. Right. So we say, you know what, I'm going to write a letter of complaint to the mayor. I am going to write a letter of complaint to the chief of police. You know, I'm going to write a statement and say it to the judge. And so, um, so that, that's, that's sort of, um, if you think about Lunda, it's okay. So, yeah. So, uh, when some of these things happen, I was like, man, there's got to be another way. Like, we can't just, it, yeah, there's all that anger that needs to go somewhere, right? So, right. for me, I'm always trying to look, okay, this anger has got to go somewhere. and It's got to go somewhere productive and healthy. And so it's going to go into organizing and staying up at four till four o'clock in the morning with six or seven of my really close friends and write letters and make signs and organize a march and a protest, you know, um, yeah. and do a letter writing campaign and a phone, a phone calling campaign because um, we're mad as heck, you know. So <laughs> so um, and this is a playbook. If you think about it, this is a playbook out of the 60s and, you know, the civil rights movement. Right. It's always been a playbook. in social. so uh, I gotcha. Yeah. So but this is great, but if you think about the 660s when the freedom writers went down south and registered people, you know, to get blacks to vote, right? Because of the injustices and segregation and all that. There was like high school and college students. They were packed in sardines and looking in the heat of like 120 degree heat in, in, yeah. in summer. And they didn't have air conditioning, but they're riding down there. And we asked them, what are you guys doing this? These are horrible conditions. Yeah. Like, well, we're going to go and help people register to vote. I was like, whoa, right? Right. And yeah. these weren't like 50-year-olds. These were 18, 19-year-olds. Yeah. So when you think about some of these heroes that paved the way for us, if they be Mona Jay, if we apply that mentality of how can we become part of the movement, yeah. which would literally all in a part of the struggle, that we're... We came here. It's not. It's not us. We're not unique. Bay Mona. We are part of this bigger story, this struggle to become American. We 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 to to create a multicultural America that sees us and that recognizes. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, didn't want to go too far in that, but now you're creating a different movement, right? With this. Yeah. You know, concert thing. Hey, hey, tell us about it, man. Uh, tell us about that first one. That first one was amazing. Can you tell us? You know, yeah. let's let's start about. Maybe about like the reason behind it. Is there? Yeah. Okay. So this concert came about, you know, um, actually, my older brother, 
Um, cause you know, lately since quarantine, I've been karaoke and like, you know, just <laughs> let me, you. don't you know me, follow me. I'm karaoke at home, you know, because, um, that's my therapy. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and this monk quarantine site, uh, that started the monk karaoke quarantine. Yeah. 20,000 members in La Monk. Yeah. Everybody and their mama's a singer at home. Right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> So my brother, like, since I mean, you sing all the time. Why don't you get a bunch of famous singers and you guys yeah. do a, a concert? I'm like, yeah, everyone's busy. But I realized, wait, if I'm locked up, everybody's locked up in their own home, right? Yeah. I'm not a professional singer, but I ur- I get the urge to sing. I'm sure some of these professional singers, yeah, I get along with Madonna. I'm sure that they're, they're probably digging to do it, but like kind of dying to do a concert or sing to their fans. Yeah. Yeah. So then my brother gave me the idea one day. I'm like, yeah, why don't I think about it? So I kind of sat, sat on it for a little bit and you know, there's news of like Elton John and all these other folks, famous celebrities doing virtual concerts for their fans, right? Yeah. But then I'm like, if we invite someone like a Thuli Baku or a Chami or a Luya, we can't just do it on Zoom, right? Yeah. We gotta, yeah. Like, we got to have the broadband to bring in the quality of the mu- the the because their music move pe- moves people, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I was like, well, let me connect. So I connect with Chami and... um. Jamie and I had our sort of our conversation. Jamie's like, Tunsa, you know, I think that's a good idea. I said, I said, well, Jamie, I think why don't um we're kind of tell each other, no, you host and I'll come MC. She goes, No, you host and I'll come sing, <laughs> right? <laughs> because, yeah. Jami, uh, because you're a sing, you're an MC, so you can bring other singers in too. Yeah. So yeah. well, I said, I, I told Jamie and I said, Jamie, you know, let's do it. We had this conversation. Who Jamie, ah, should we do it? Yes. Yeah, so Tommy got on board, and then I called Mitch at the station, and I said, "Mitch, man, I want to bring, I want to do this concert, but these are professional singers. Tommy, Thule, they've been singing for thirty years. We can't just have them go on some Facebook page live, you know? Like, can you ha- do you have the the capability to stream high quality audio and sound? Because I want a kusaka, no Yeah. So, so Mitch, Mitch is so Mitch is Mitch Lee is the owner of Baymong TV. I've known Mitch for twenty years. We um. Yeah. Worked on a lot of projects together. He always supports us at Mong Day at the Fair. Um, he's like, Tujer, you know, we could do it. We can create. If you want to do that, I can create a virtual stage. And we can zo- bring them in. Um, and they can sing from home, but we can bring them in good quality. So, yeah, we can do that. Right. I said, like, okay, well, let's let's talk. So I sat down with Mitch. I said, Mitch, I'll bring the MC stuff. But we got a plan for plan A, plan B, plan C, right? Like if there's no connection, you turn the camera to me and I got to pull jokes out of my butt like, like crazy, right? <laughs> so Mitch is like, too, Jerry, you do your part, I'll do my part. Yeah, yeah. So Mitch and I kind of got into, okay, well, we can't do this alone. We have to bring in some folks who um who can, you know, build a concert around, an event around. Yeah. So we kind of, and I, I thought about, um, Chai, I thought about, um, you know, during the 80s um, to, to attack the epidemic of um, hunger. Yeah. World hunger in, in Africa. All these stars got together and did the uh, "We Are the World" video, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah. And then Michael Jackson has a song called "Heal the World," right? Yeah. Heal the world, yeah. make it a better place for you and for me. Yeah. And for me and for human race. Yeah. Like, I did a little Michael Jack Jackson rendition right. um, <laughs> called "Instead of Healing." Uh, he, yeah, you got to I'll, 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 we can share the link later on the little mic. I'm going to add the audio in there just to, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so yeah, so I was thinking about Michael Jackson's Heal the World, We Are the World, the Pandemic, Bay Tung the Tay through the Diaspora. Um, and everyone's just like the, I mean, if we are a part of all these countries and their statistics, then then we're we're going through some stuff too. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so music heals, right? Through you can tell by this quarantine site, um, yeah. and we're thinking, well, let's do something where we bring healing through music. We didn't have any political affiliation. We didn't have belong to a nonprofit organization, no government. Um, but all of these boundaries that divided us before, now, uh, the the national boundaries, right? Yeah. Um, the the nonprofits, the government, all that didn't matter. The, what yeah. only mattered was that when you hear a Thuli Baku song, you're like. When you hear um, Jami's Valentine song, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. you hear these songs, you just kind of, oh, and do not do a lot. And you just mentally 
you forget that we're in a pandemic. You think about when you're walking around the lake, you know, and holding your girlfriend's hand when you're 14 years old right. for the first time and you're getting the yeah. butterflies. So, yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, well, let's bring some of these legends back and let's do something like a We Are the World. Yeah. yeah. So let's call it Heal, um, Heal the World, Heal um, through, through Hmong music. Because we okay. had to make it Hmong and we yeah. had to make it uh, through music because right. that's what draw people. So thus was born the idea, heal the world through Hmong music. Right. Um, and then we brought these legends, but then we wanted to make it intergenerational because Tuli, Chami, Tilu, Lama, they're one generation. Yeah. Paradise, Dang, they're one generation, right? And then yeah. Two Psycho, um, and then some of the youngest, like like um, Panya and, and uh, Mavu, they're one generation. Right. And then the Wonders, they want the, the Hmong music has evolved since Li Peng, the legendary. By the way, he's going to be on our show. We'll talk about that too. Okay. Um, so, so you have the different generation, and then the genre, because you got like two psycho, who's a hip hop artist, and then this time we're going to have a a a, a R and B artist, um, Chenny Chenny Xiong. This this cat is cool. He's, he's they do they're doing monk songs, but they sound like Usher and like R <laughs> Kelly, you know, with the with their vibe. So, yeah. yeah like a sexy cool vibe for the young people but they're doing all in Hmong, you know yeah. so um yeah so the idea was to bridge the 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 um Hmong around the world and then bridge the generation right and then the genre so we had and the cool thing is these artists if we get them to buy in they sing from the comfort of their home anyway they're gonna yeah. do it anyway but we're gonna give them the broadband to to stream quality stuff to their to their fans and to everybody else and their mama yeah. So yeah, when um, I said Tommy, um, Tommy and and um, her team down there in California and uh, Pong and Misty, um, uh, Pong is the lead singer, one of the lead singers for Paradise. Uh -huh. uh, Misty is uh, his wife, and so they they they're actually one of the Hmong bands that have staying power. They've been doing this for twenty plus years, right? A lot right. of Hmong bands who are famous, they boom, they do the thing, and after a few years, they fizzle out because. They don't know how to market. They don't have a good a business strategy, which is what I appreciate about your show. You you talk about that. Yeah. Um, so when they they bought they came on board, and I gotta I gotta tell you, Chai, our move our our concert. We were gonna do one concert, <clears throat> and uh, when I thought about because in the past, man, when you do something, there's a lot of politics involved, you know, clan stuff involved, you know, because of California. With you, I made. I wanted to make it very clear to people that came in. I said, "You guys, we have one goal only. Our goal is to bring love, kindness, and healing, and uplift hearts into people, Hmong families' homes." Tonu de dena, bechu ho, bechu linka mung, bechu nung nonprofit kong ho, bechu nung government, bechu de pechu ngai chou xia ge chou xia ge xi lu xi ba de ne bo de shou de zuo ye. But you follow John to music. Yaro ne ka ni mlong ka ni zai nyo xia ka ni zai zai xia. Bei mong yu yi hai neng hai dia. Bei yin ji ke zai yin dao ya bei yu zai zai. Dia xi tu ka mo na. We're gonna live through it. Where well, life goes on for us. We survive. You know genocide, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this concert had one basic goal, and I said, I want to tell you guys, I don't, I have zero money, <laughs> but I got a guy who got a TV station. He's gonna donate. Yeah. Yeah. Donate your your voice and your your songs. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um. And so we did it. 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 We did I have not gotten my family and all of us, like my whole entire family, like my kids and my wife, right. and we have not sat down together as a family to watch something. Right. It was like, wow, man, when you guys talk about that, I was like, wow, I didn't realize it, that we actually sat and watched the entire show as a family together, you know, yeah. without yeah. even knowing. <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of other family did that as well. Yeah. You know, so that you guys created something there that, that, that created that magic. Because right. I, I thought about that. I'm like, wow, you know, I've never sat down with my kids, my wife, and we just sat there. I and mean, my kids, I mean, they they just sat and watched. I'm like, wow, that's amazing, you know? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I hope so, you guys put it on the big screen TV. Uh, I just got a 52-inch. Oh, that's good. <laughs> no, big enough. Streaming on there. It's good quality. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that was the idea is is if you bring this into their, their homes um i mean they're watching all sorts of crazy programs on tv anyway right yeah so let's bring something that's monk centric monk pride worldwide yeah. intergenerational and so and let's spread some goodness good stories in there so when when this concert came about let's put so pic show pictures of examples of monk people doing good like uh miley Wu and morgan um their business uh uh, by the way, they're one of our major sponsors um, at this time. You know, they stepped up. And uh, that's why I'm going to, I'll do a little pitch to all your business folks on here too. Oh, guys, guys, give them some thumbs up. You know, get some thumbs yeah. up, guys. You know, for yeah. sponsors. Uh, did, you, did you have any other sponsors? Let's give them. Let's give um, them. Yeah. So we have, he stepped up and I'll share with you that story in a bit. But when, when we did this, we had a zero budget and we think, we didn't even think about um, money was an issue. The idea was we just wanted to um, put on a great show. And I think along the way, you can tell, I, I could tell you in the studio, um, when we when we when we kicked it off, by the way, this concert, to put it together, we had to do lots of Zoom calls. We had to call overseas. It's a rising star in, in Thailand, right? right. Okay, you test, test, test. Now we are. Mm -hmm. So we had to meet at a time where we can um, do all. So that was a lot of behind the scenes work. And we met and think, we had, okay, let's plan for a two hour meeting. Turned out to be a three hour, four hour meeting, right? And, and all on Zoom. So um, it was just a lot of technical. And, you know, I got to tell you, Chai, we had um, Pong Tia, um, uh, Paradise Chami, they're musicians, singers. So they, they were able to mentor some of the younger artists, you know, like Tufang too, a rising star in California, right? And uh, um, Tufang, Tufang Chang. So um, when uh, when some of the younger artists, I said, oh, Chami is gonna perform, Lou's gonna perform. Oh yeah, like this Panyin Shua, she won. Do you know Panyin Shua won the Thai version of American Idol? <laughs> no, I didn't, but. Yeah, she you should look her up. Was, She's yeah. famous over there. Yeah. She's a little girl from a little, little village and her story is remarkable. So you don't just have singers, Chai. You have singers with a story, right? Yeah. So we brought them on. We also want to showcase the Hmong people who were making masks and donating. We want to showcase Hmong people at the front lines, like Dr. Paul Sai Kau Tao, who is um, in Australia giving, making videos, kind of like what you do as a public service to teach about COVID. Dr. David Tao and his uh, medical uh, Hmong Medical Association here, Professional Association. So all these groups doing good things um, like attorney Mamo he handed out hundred a hundred gift bags of rice and toilet paper to elders in the community. Wow. Like uh Yang Yang from Yummy Treats in Madison, who said, I'm gonna cook for 200 people, you know, just more more pool as not. Yeah. So these are stories that I know about because they're my friends. Yeah. But other Hmong people didn't know about. And I want to say, you know, let's give them an example of what Hmong people do, what how we step up when the world needs us, right? Yeah. Because we have okay, Mona. We have always been paying each to she law, she buy, you know, he has paid Luna Sonya because we were there, you know, that was us. So, right? We've been there. Yeah. So, we, we know the pains. Right. So, we, yeah. wanted to, we wanted to insert these messages in between the acts. So, when we did that concert, um, our concert started at nine, and right about 9 30, 9 40, I locked out. I, in the studio, there was Mitch and the three of us. I'm a one man show on stage, right? And we had two two helpers, Mitch's wife and Abao, one of his uh, assistants. And I got to tell you, I was pumped. We didn't know how it was gonna go. In moment, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, man, virtual concert. You know. And then uh, right about nine thirty, I had like maybe a few thousand, two, three, four thousand. But every five minutes, it went up by a thousand, a thousand. So about 45 minutes in the show, I looked up, I'm like, oh, there's freaking like 20,000 people on here, right? Yes, uh, yeah. YouTube is different from Facebook. It's different. So later on, I'm, I learned that um, that because of F F social media analytics, now there's different counts that we were able to get a, a holistic picture of, of what the, the traffic that day. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, man, I better bring my A game now, right? In the studio, <laughs> it's just me and the camera. But I'm like, man, forget y'all. I'm in my head. I'm thinking there's a thousand people in the audience, and I'm they're laughing at my jokes, and I gotta have some yeah. fun. Yeah. So yeah. What, what, the, what was the numbers? I mean, I, I love to hear the numbers. What, so the what numbers? 
we found out that day. So that day, um, as it got on the Facebook page, I believe it got up to because because there's two main places we're streaming from, which is the Paymon TV Facebook and Paymon TV YouTube channel, right? Yeah. So the Facebook we got up to I think about thirteen thousand or so live live audience. Yeah. And the the you the YouTube guy I think got to about like nine or ten ten thousand mark. So, and then on my own personal um watch party on my page it was like thirteen hundred too, right? Uh -huh. So. But, Later on, we learned that um, when people are doing watch parties, because and this is maybe for you guys who are who are supporting your show too, encourage people to do watch parties. Because let's say if Sai Tao is your friend and he does a watch party, that all of his friends get to share in on your your watch party. They get yeah. to see. That. So we found out later on through the watch party and through all the shares that there were one hundred sixty thousand live viewers for our three hour concert. One hundred sixty thousand, right? And then, now this isn't a one hour event. This is a three hour event. We are planning for two hours, but man, I had so much fun. We just said, screw it, Mitch. Let's just, let's just roll. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Um, and then at the, like 10 days later, um, I logged on and I was looking at it. It had over 500,000 views because the, our event is permanently archived on social media and Facebook and YouTube, right? Yeah, so yeah. Any views after that it gets counted. So ten days afterwards, I went back and uh, we did an analysis. Um, Chami and her team in Cali did this analysis because they followed social trends, and, and um, I didn't even realize this because you know Chami and and Dumwa they've been singing in concerts for many years, and they also followed the um, the uh, one of the biggest Hmong event in the world, which is the Fresno New Year, right? And the yeah. live view there. And Chami said something, and she said, "Tunza, I don't know if you know this." And Chami and her team said. There's never been an event like this. Even the Fresno New Year live viewers, they don't get this kind of live viewers. So this yeah. is the largest virtual event of its kind with this many hundreds of uh, thousands of people viewing at one time. Yeah. And so it is unprecedented, right? So I don't know what we did, but we, I think we just stumbled onto something and kind of set the bar. And we were surprised too, because too, I would have been happy if, you know, fam, few families like, hey, thanks for entertaining us, you know? Right. Then when we saw the power of social media, um, and I was happy, you know, that night I felt like, um, because when I was looking, you know, as the numbers go up, the comments start flashing like lightning. Yeah. After like the first half hour, I couldn't even keep up somewhere. All right. I'm just going to go with the flow and stick to the schedule. So. It's, it was great. You I mean, even like I was just a viewer, right? I, in my mind, I, I kept thinking about it for the past, like the next three days for some reason. Yeah. So whatever it was that you guys did was like it was like kind of like a positive influence, right? Yeah. You got you got me and my family together, um, and we all watched it together. And yeah. the kids didn't complain, and whatever it was, awesome. So yeah. I mean, I know I'm kind of keeping you, keeping you kind of late. So let's let's get down to it. To um, what's just, it I think uh, I'll push my event back a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, and then uh, we'll, I, we'll, we got a little bit of time. Yeah, go so, ahead. So guys, give us some likes. Uh, give us some likes and some, some hearts. You know, you, so like, uh, so we, so you guys, like, if you guys, if it touched you guys for some reason, give us some likes and some hearts. That uh, yeah, you appreciate it. What what uh, Dunza and his team did for this event. Now tell us about the second event uh, you guys are doing now. So the second event. Um, thanks for asking. So so after the first event, right? Of course, a lot of people were like, oh man, bitches, it's not shy, it, right? And we're like, bye, y'all. We thought we were done. I was done. I was like, man, that was a lot of work. I'm glad we did it. We're good. But then the, that's when that's when the we went back and we started seeing. So there were about thirty thousand comments that night. I I read the com. I got to about a thousand. I said, I'm not. I'm. I I, I got to go to bed. You know. <laughs> and then the next day, throughout the weekend, I had a chance to kind of go back and look at the comments and some of the more uh, detailed comments. There were a lot of great feedback. Um, a lot of praises from the community and then um and you know I, i'm i'm grateful and humbled by the response right and i think our entire team is and we were happy and i think we we're kind of celebrating and say hey you know we're proud of that we did something epic um that we did you know something um historic but now the fans want more so it's like oh man like what do you do right like rush hour was a hit with jackie chan and chris tucker now you gotta do rush hour too right so <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, let's just let's just chill for a while. So about maybe a week later, Mitch and I got together and they're like, yeah, conversations with friends here and there. You should do it. You should do it. 
I said, well, to pull something like this off, we got to get our, you know, some of our core core team members back, right? Um, so I'm like, well, Mitch, let's do some brainstorming. And uh, that's when I approached, um, you know, Chami and her team and then Misty and Pong. And um, there's some key people that I needed to be involved, you know? So I said, Mitch, man, I don't know. They're called, not, they, they, I, we got some crazy ideas. So I did a little um, survey out there. Oh, by the way, you know, even for event number one, two, I actually put a survey out there. If we did a virtual concert with some of these singers, would you guys, you know, enjoy it? And they were like, yes, yes, please do it, right? So now I'm like, well, let's do a field test. So I did a little um, survey again, you know, hey, if you guys, did you guys like it? And um, if we did another one, who would you like to see? And Chami, um, she did this great post that, hey, here are all the famous monks, top 100 famous monk singers in the last 30, 40 years, like, rank who you would like to see if we were going to do part two yeah yeah when the votes came in like bring this bring Lee Kong, bring bring my uh, malibu bring voltage that's when we got the conversation going and then uh i had a conversation with mitch and i said mitch how you doing mitch is like i'm tired you know but i'm doing it you know <laughs> and i want to tell you um i want to give just credit where credit is due chai mitch mitch said Tunza, for me it's never about the money I started this, um, he said something to the fact that the Kupiru Retiri Mong Kubina Mong History Kiana, it becomes a permanent part of our legacy that we wow. give to our kids, right? We're recording, we're doing something good that's gonna outlast us way after we leave. And he and I talked about the bigger vision, right? Yeah. That thing is it's you know, and he would have done it for free. This is a guy who who's been doing film for 30 since junior high, you know? Yeah, he loves making movies and documentaries, and he's like, Tunza, this is what I do. So you, if you could do your part again, I'd do my part. <laughs> like, yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we sat on that for about a day, and then we said, Mitch, because once we announce it, we can't go back. You know, and Mitch said something, Chai, that that it was kind of scary, but it's also in inspiring. Yeah, Mitch, Tunza, once we announce it, when they announce it, we're too big to fail now. You cannot be plastered on all these monks social media sites and not deliver. So yeah. you gotta be so we said too <laughs> well, we're too big to fail now. So that for the first concert, right? Once we got people, once we made that poster, we're like, oh shit, we gotta do this now. <laughs> and so for this second one, we're we, same thing. We're like, all right, well now we gotta bring some star power. And then we went yeah. over, and, and I also want to credit the the artists. Um, Chai, this was built around the artists and their talent. Tanaka uh, Nalona, dude from Tuli Dang, uh, Paradise, you know. Um, sure all these young or old from all backgrounds. And even this time around, throughout the process, as one of the um, key organizers of this event, I've had the honor of something you, the fans don't see now. When I call Likon and we're talking for two hours on Skype, on uh, so FaceTime, I'm calling Sifu Paul um, Ta, and I'm calling, you know, my Ta and, and uh, Lou and all these people. Uh, with Jami on the line, there's three or four of us. They're having a conversation at two in the morning, our time. Yeah. And you get to know these artists and their, their personalities. Um, you start to see the the essence of what it means to be monkey she she come across and through the process i have been humbled by my Hmong american experience right yeah mm -hmm. right <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so this time, man, I'm grateful. We saw what you the not your artists uh, from Sifu Paul Ta to Li Gong to my Ta Nyonya Latte to Lu Ya Nim to Tun Sai Sheng to Pei Yin Shuo Jiti. Oh, bitch, you make your fucking day Australia, bitch. Maybe I don't want to say anything yet, but um, hey, Jiti, no, then you know, from here, Li Peng, Li Peng is a legend. Li Peng, who got the Chi Jiu Xiong? We got the Da Si Tao Dia. Tun Zhe Gu Wa Ne Wo Na Ne Hu Gu Yin Zhong Xia Tia Gu Yin. Let's do this. So, Nikiri, um, 
So we don't share them. I had to pay a cheat to eat coffee at the air platform at the air. Shut up, boy. You should have been They 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 believed in our dream and our vision. Yeah. So the mission is the vision is very important. So it's still so, so this the second concert still the same vision, same you know yeah like same mission right, and the mission is just to get bring us together through music. Yeah. So bring us together through music. So the concert itself is the the event is the concert now. Yeah. That's good. that's a three hour concert. Once we're done. Lights go off, cameras go off, people go to bed. Yeah. But now it's evolved to become a movement. So the movement is the do good, give back, hashtag do good, give back in your communities, right? So she gonna think. That's why this second concert, uh, we call it unity, bringing to you know, bringing everyone together. And this second concert, we're gonna push that, you know what, to your fans who watch you on their hustler show who may be more business oriented. Hey, if you own a business, what are you and you're struggling, which is fine, but Oh, um, one thing. So the idea of healing now, when yeah. we heal ourselves, we heal other, when we heal others, we heal ourselves. Right. So make your business who are struggling. Um, how do you, how do you bounce back up? Well, you go out there and you, you do a, a act of, act of kindness, acts of kindness for your community. And they say, man, don't don't you So you do that, you pay it forward. Right. And so, so this movement is, you don't need to be a doctor or teacher or lawyer. You don't need to have a senator by your name to give back. You know, name we do chua and they sell chua and they sell mass to donate to hospital. Need to part to be a movement or yeah, yeah. To join a movement, pay you more membership, pay you gain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, could if you're a 15 year old, you come with the other one. You're not your neighbor. You could do part become pay for movement, part of a movement or not. You could be in blood day now. Yeah, oh, you take your lead like what they see. Yeah, you come to what they got to become a part of a movement. She tells she's part. Yeah. So, so that's the idea we want to spread um through through our concert and so. So, 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 how do you track that, right? And I think the probably the best way to track is like what the hashtag, maybe like hashtag. The hashtag. Good, so the hashtag, hashtag. Uh, use the hashtag heal mong. Two is in the number. The first one when you heal mong twenty twenty up. The second answer we've been using hashtag heal mong two is in the number, and then uh unity heal mong two unity, and then another hashtag we've been using for the movement is the hashtag um, do good give back. Right, and then uh, so that's why this. So that's two uh, hashtag. Yeah. Do good, give back in one word, or yeah, do, do good, give back in one hashtag. Um, four words in one hashtag. Do good, give back. Okay, good. So I'm okay, yeah. So uh, just just so you guys know, uh, just so a way how they can track how you know how their yeah. how this event is going. If you guys do any good deed. And you know, just just yeah. do a hashtag. Do good, give back. You know, do yeah. good or hashtag uh, heal home uh, to unity, and that's their way of saying, okay, we are making a difference yeah. in this particular uh, event that we're holding. So, right. uh, any other any other agenda that you kind of like trying to push with? Yeah. This? So uh, I, I, we haven't unveiled this yet, but this time because of the the, the following fans and as business owners now. We are we're planning to get at least um, like two hundred thousand live viewers, if not more. Uh, maybe you know try to get four hundred thousand. So we're you know we got big goals. We're happy with just to connect with the community. That's she. Uh, if for business owners, we're gonna launch in the next few days. How and this is kind of um you'll see if you watch the show, we're gonna have a, a public ask on there. Um, so we encourage you to um support us um financially if you're able to. You know whether it's I mean if you think about it, right, Chai? If you got five people in your household. In it, China, we're yeah. bringing you a $50, $50 concert value for free, right? So, right. if you don't want to pick one week and then can you move to the chummy through the TV, this is the case of the chummy. And I go, hold on, let me get it. It's a video, and it's a new model. This is a new side, all right? Yeah, and it's a support game. We're going to launch this, uh, this giving ask, uh, site, yeah. and um, you know, click whether it's five bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks. If you enjoy the show, yeah, um, support us because that money is going to go to first of all um, give a little gift to the artists for their time, 
Yeah. Uh, second of all, also support the, the production of the show. This television station needs to pay its light bill and the mic. I mean, we just, Mitch has spent, he just spent, I think, another 2000 like for microphones and lighting to upgrade the show, right? Wow, yeah. Um, and that's out of his own pocket, right? Yeah. And it's also going to go, one more thing, after the our last concert, um, the community pitched in and we were able to fundraise $4,600 to send to each of me at an orphanage. You know, and that stuff is on our site too. So we'll highlight that's part of the do good campaign. That's what sparked the do good campaign. So, so, tell me more about that because I think that touched a lot of people. And, and you, <laughs> you met your max, right? You met your goal, yeah. Max, right? Yeah. Tell us so, about that. Yeah. So after the first concert, um, we had some folks that donated a total of three hundred dollars, and I and I went back to their meeting after Pejo concert with the hey guys, we have three hundred dollars. What do you guys want to do with that? Hey, Pejo concert. Uh, he put the palang shape of paper a lot, right? <laughs> and um, Misty, Misty made a great suggestion. She said, "Thumbs up." We could. Um, so uh, someone said we can give each artist twenty bucks for gas. Uh, Misty said, "Thumbs up." Let's give that to these orphans that you that um, I was telling them about this orphanage, um, uh, Ban Run China. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what a great suggestion. And the, the artists, the other people, Latichi, Latichi, they didn't think twice. Chai, they said, "Yep." Great idea. Let's do it. They want to it. And when I shared that chai on my wall, I shared it. And a week later, everyone said, "If you guys are doing this, Nithi artists, Nithi share the phone, they donate one as a team." So as we call it team, team he among and friends and family together. Some business donated a hundred, some donated two hundred, some gave twenty, some gave ten. But we were able in a week send that check. I I, I Facetime them. Um, I Zoom called them and present. I was able to present to the director of this um, this uh, this center for for you know kids. Yeah. And so yeah. So that's what I know. it was kind of emotional that you know, they got that, and you know, it, I mean, I, it was kind of emotional for me for you guys to do that to to give to them. So this right, right. Is the same co concept, right? So yeah. what you guys are going to unveil uh, for this particular you know concert tomorrow is the same ask, right? So right. Is, so. Is it same. We'll tomorrow, but this time we'll make it more convenient because last time we didn't have a place where people want to give. So decided if you're watching tomorrow and if you feel the urge to give, we'll, we'll introduce that in the beginning. So you'll know there'll be a link there and then you can give. Again, any amount. If you don't give, if you send us if you send us a like or whatever, we're, we're cool with that. But if you're able to give, great. You know, and pay more. I think at the end of the day, Ping and Charlie Lalu Jong, they hey, you know, one each child, Tun Zali, or Jay Chony Patim, he only will look cancer. No, what a pay touching line, not there. Like your law is, you need sunny, they do it, they need grandma, don't they dance, they pay the Jong Shikhan down now. Yeah. No, that's priceless. She won't hear you, you talk, got your story, but I dare. Got the coaching for the first time in a long time. They show, okay, a mom, the dad, they can be doing your long way. They was you getting loans, they look, okay. Yeah. That's priceless. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. I have not done that. Let yeah, me, I don't remember doing that for. You know, you're gonna do that tomorrow. Yes, sir. We'll be doing and then, that. Um, and you can do it tomorrow, and then uh, I'll say, hey, um, I, I might give a shout out. Uh, so shout out to Google Bumble, Canada, uh, Florida. Um, you got you got lost, okay? Got you know, you're linked. You got got more cheetah land. Got you know, eat the land. You got more cheetah. I might do a little stuff like that. Definitely, definitely, yes, because you know, it. I mean, that's five bucks. You know, even like. Even if it's one dollar, right? Out of all the viewers, like even from like, let's yeah. say from the past, that's yeah. like you talk about five hundred thousand views, or whatever, and you get a dollar from each one. You mean that's like uh, that's yeah. a lot of money right there. So we get a dollar from twenty thousand viewers, right? Um, yeah. So so that'd be great. But the thing about some of this site is that they charge a little bit of fee. So I think to to maximize your donation, I, I'll have a plan. I'll say if there's five people in your household, um, donate from one person, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say even the much you like, and they donate and go cheat a lot, right? And then that, for them, that'd be great, you know. Yeah. You know we're we're gonna do this anyway. Yeah. Um, but I believe in the goodness of our people. And that causes for what? Just to help. Yeah, our... that causes to, so that we can continue to do another concert, maybe J fourth, right? Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll yeah. yeah. Whether... So cause, let, let's talk about the cause. So that that money is going toward. Uh, yeah, uh, like it's before it's you donate that to another friend, like no. Nah. So, you know, but, uh, 
as the production team wants, depending on how much we fundraise, then we yeah. call it a fundraising now because this is this is not a business, right? It's a it's a free event. And we're hoping that this event will inspire people to give back and do good. And by giving back, donate. And then that money will go to, again, so, uh, we want to say thank you to the artists, right? We also want to say, hey, we're going to continue to bring more quality show and upgrade our program. We also want to say, hey, all we've got a team about um, 12 people this time. Last time we had another team about 12 people. And overall, guys, the 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 amount of human hours, time, not even mentioning the time and talent and energy, right? Yeah. But the human hours is like hundreds of hours of volunteer hours to put something like this together, right? Yeah. So these people got to eat. Um, you know, we have people who drove our co MC drove in four hours away that has to pay for her own gas, right? And yeah. she has a she's a, an essential worker too that she took a whole week off, right? Yeah. So we have people who are still working full-time jobs, but who do this for the love and for the good of the community. So I don't want them to have to pay for their own gas. Gotcha. Right? You know, I want to be able to like, hey, you know, you guys work hard. Let's let's order some pizza in or something, right? Yeah. So it's stuff like that. Um, and then also we want to maybe allocate a certain proportion, like we did last time. Yeah. We want to be able to say, hey. Um, those organizations, those reputable uh, organizations that are um, that are struggling, yeah. let's the team um, designate a certain amount to help them get back on their feet too. Especially you know, serve your law, you serve your young people who are you know who are, are suffering. So yeah, gotcha. yeah so that's the cause. That's so, it. Yeah, I gotta so, get going. Here, um, but yeah, thanks for the, you know, so, um, the show tomorrow is start that. Uh, you announce it. We changed it. It's gonna start uh, Central Time. We said nine. Yeah. And I'm gonna give your viewers a little heads up. There's gonna be. It's gonna start at eight forty-five because that's when we go live and we go the fifteen-minute clock countdown. But it, even in the in the opening, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff that you don't want to miss. That's gotcha. just the pre-show. Gotcha. And then at the end, there's gonna be five or six surprises that we're gonna keep throwing at you. Ooh. So. so so when you do, when you think the show's over, I'm gonna give you a clue. It's not over until me and that co MC come and says now it's over, and you see the word the end. Just trust me. Hey, Just so, no. yeah. gotcha, great, great. So hey, one last thing for let you go. You know, yeah. we uh, for every guest that comes on the show is that I ask a question like, like the question is, if I was to give you one billion dollars, right? Yeah. What's the first two things you would do with it? First of all, I uh, I definitely make sure that um, that she no pick your good charts on you, know, right? Yeah. And so, you know, a billion dollars. That's I want to make sure that we're we're taking care of, but I want to leave something behind so that when I cannot spend that in my lifetime. So that billion dollars, I need to create something that's gonna outlast me a hundred years from now. So I'm a comedian, I'm an entertainer. I would love to see an artist, um, a Musicians, artists, uh, spoken, uh, right? Uh, entertainment center, so that we can um, archive more musicians, entertainers for the next two hundred years, right? So, like a music talent agency, um, you know, here they have like an endowment for the arts. I want something like that, an endowment for the arts, so that fifty years from now, somebody will tell a joke that Tujer once told. When he came to America, <laughs> living in the projects. That's awesome. Second thing. Okay. Anything else for second thing? We're good. Thanks a lot, bro. All right. Thank okay. you. See you All later. Right. Guys. All right, Take guys. That's the show tomorrow night. And uh, keep hustling, guys. All right. Thanks, Tunze. All right. Thank you. See ya.